guys and welcome back to my channel my name is Amina and this is experiencing fragrances with Amina so I am really excited about today's video I'm gonna be doing a review on a house that is new to me um, but they've been around for a while I guess you consider this an indie brand so the name is Bortnikov and they have released a brand new collection I believe it's called the sixth collection uh, which consists of three fragrances Sans Fleur um, Chip de Nord and Oud Lohan. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it just feels right to say it like that. <laughs> so, as I said, the collection consists of three fragrances. Luckily, I was able to be part of a split where one person purchased all three bottles in full, and once he received them, then he decanted them, you know, by request. I wanted five mils of each, so I have these five mil vials here of each fragrance so i don't want to spend too much time on you know talking about the house or anything i want to really focus on the review because i feel like it's going to be quite long because i have many many thoughts um but ultimately i'm just really excited um i'm really impressed with the fragrances and the quality i haven't tested anything quite like it so yeah, I'm just really excited to share my thoughts. So let's go. So I have all three fragrances sprayed on my wrist and my hands. Okay, so the first scent I wanna talk about is my least favorite, and that one is Sans Fleur, which basically translates to without florals or without flowers or something like that. And that's basically what the fragrance is. It's more of a smoky, woody, oud forward fragrance to my nose. Um, but it does have some balsamic qualities that I really do enjoy. However, the opening in here is quite intense. Um, very boozy, too boozy for me. There's a rum note in the opening. And just based on my taste and, you know, just how I react to certain fragrances, I did not find that opening to be pleasant at all. Uh, just for reference, I used to own... Dua's um, rendition of Single Malt by Killian's and that was too much. That was too much. I ended up selling it. It was way too boozy, almost gag inducing. So, you know, there's that. It's a personal thing. So thankfully the rum boozy note only lasts about the first 15 to 20 minutes and then it goes away, thankfully, leaving behind a quite dark, smoky, woody oud fragrance. Um, like I said, it does have this balsamic quality, which I really do enjoy, um, but ultimately I would say it's a smoky, woody oud fragrance. Um, I don't find the oud here to be animalic at all. Um, like I said, it's just, it leans more on the smoky side rather than the animalic side. Um, I do sense a little bit of sweetness in here, which I'm assuming comes from the vanilla. I wouldn't characterize it as a sweet fragrance by any means at all, because it's not, but I feel like the vanilla note in here plays an important role in the composition, um, along with the fennel. I'm not really familiar with fennel when it comes to um, fragrances or even cooking, like the fresh fennel, I'm not super familiar with it, but there's this like gritty earthy rootiness in here that's similar to some sort some types of um vetiver and i'm guessing that's because of the fennel because there isn't any vetiver in here unless there is i don't know but i feel like that slight sweetness from the vanilla and that earthy rootiness of the fennel i'm assuming it's fennel it really works well because i find that those elements give the fragrance more dimension. Um, I know I said I found it quite linear, which I do, but um, I don't find the fragrance to be one note or one layered, I guess I should say. I feel like it does have depth. So when I say one note or one layered, I kind of picture it as something that's on like a 2D plane for example, and something that has depth and dimension will be in 3D or even 4D, etc. So I do find this fragrance to have multi-dimensions, but I find it to kind of remain the same throughout the wearing, making it very linear. For me, the performance on this fragrance isn't the best, which kind of caught me by surprise because it is an Estrella de Parfum, um, and also because it's expensive. and 
yeah, I just felt like it didn't project long on my skin at all and it became a skin set quite quickly. I would say no no longer than maybe two or three hours max and it just stays that way until it becomes really really soft almost fluffy in texture but it's funny because when i was wearing this i felt like it disappeared like completely went away um, after some time but then i'd occasionally catch whiffs of like a very faint vanilla ice cream um almost phantom like it's very strange i don't know if that was the intention for this fragrance but i just find the dry down to be a little bit lackluster for my taste and wish that it was more potent and it was more present and the whole phantom thing i could be making that up i don't know but that's just what i got overall the fragrance is really not bad i i did enjoy wearing it throughout the mid but for me the opening was just a bit too much dry down was not enough and it just left me wanting more, I guess, um, especially for the price. I believe for a 50 ml bottle, you're looking at $350 and that is way too much money to invest on a fragrance that, you know, I don't enjoy every part of the wear. So Sunfleur, I mean, I really struggled with this. It's the one that I wore the most. I mean, this is an estrate. I wore this over a couple days and yeah, I just feel like uh, yeah, I, I did struggle with it. I, I wanted to like it based on the notes. I was like, yes, this sounds like it'd be amazing. And I was let down a bit. But yeah, that is Saint Fleur. The last two, spoiler alert, are amazing. I can't choose which one I like more. They're both beautiful, but we'll start off with Chypre du Nord. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so when I heard about the release, the one fragrance I was most excited to try was Sheep du Nord because it's a sheep and you guys already know. Excuse my baby, she's making a lot of noise. Stormy! Stormy! <laughs> she roams free in the night. Anyway, so Sheep du Nord was the one that I was most excited for. The notes sounded really interesting and you know, I know Bortnikov has other sheep style fragrances that I don't personally have experience with, but I'm sure they're amazing. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm excited to talk about this one. So the opening of this is just, oh, it's so good, it's so good. It's a soft, sweet citrus um, with a bit of greenness. I know there's orange in the opening, um, but you have, you get that sweet orange, but you also get like, a fresh crisp greenness almost like uh, the leaves of the orange I do find this one a little bit difficult to describe um, but uh, it's just so good mm, it's just <laughs> so like I said the opening is like a soft citrus sweet orange with just the right amount of greenness there's some bergamot in here which I'm sure plays a role but it's not prominent to my nose um, in the mid you have this juicy peach and nutmeg and the peach here I find very special because it's not like a sweet tart peach or like a syrupy peach it's more of like a fresh peach and the peach note in here is so it's just so good I feel like I can feel the texture like the fuzzy texture of the peach uh, skin and yeah, I think this is probably the best peach that I've ever experienced in a fragrance. Um, and because it's a sheep, and it be, because it's a sheep, and because it has a uh, peach in it, you would kind of automatically go in the route of, oh, this smells like Mitsuko. Mits, Mitsuko. <laughs> I always struggle with it. Why? I don't know. But the peach note in this one, and the peach note in Mits, Mitsuko is completely different completely different the peach nut in Mitsoko to me is not very prominent whereas here it is in the freshest bestest way ever i'm telling you just imagine like cutting a peach in half and like dusting warm nutmeg on it it's just it's 
so good. It's so good. So I keep talking about the peach, I know, but the peach to me is my favorite part of this fragrance. Um, and it lasts for the majority of the, actually it lasts the whole wearing, the peach note. Um, it just kind of takes a step back uh, towards the end. But the peach even has this like creaminess to it. It's quite strange. Um, it's important to note though that this fragrance does have a prominent powderiness. And you guys know how I feel about powdery fragrances. But here, I think the reason why it sits okay with me is the fact that the powderiness doesn't remind me of like lipstick or baby powder or makeup or anything. It's more a powdery, fluffy, light, I don't want to say airy texture, but the texture is more powdery in texture than it is in scent, if I if that makes any sense. Um, that could be perhaps because of the natural musk used in the fragrance, um, but ultimately everything just works so well in here. Nothing feels out of place, nothing feels overworked. Everything just falls into place so beautifully and just harmonizes together mm. and you get that warmth of the nutmeg it just it's just like a puzzle all the puzzle pieces just put together like just fits so well oh, it's so good so just i'm obsessed i'm obsessed with it i'm obsessed and it's expensive it's 250 dollars 350 dollars i think that's good my cat, Stormy, you're making so much noise. So this fragrance also kind of, it has a typical sheep DNA, but it doesn't have a vintage feel, nor does it feel modern. I would say it kind of feels timeless, like you would be able to smell this fragrance and have no idea when it was made. It doesn't feel old, it doesn't feel new, it just feels right. It just does. I feel like this would be a really good one to wear in the winter months. All of these actually I think are fall winter fragrances for sure, um, but this one I think is a sheep fragrance that will stand really really cold temperatures it oh this thing also lasts forever this compared to, this sheep the nord blows sounds flares out of the water tenfold it's crazy it's it, la it has really good lasting power one that i would expect from an estrade de parfum so the dry down here is quite musky i would say very musky it's mossy it's woody it has a bit of sweetness um, and it becomes even thick in texture but it has um this aromatic almost tea like a uh, nuance that i feel kind of keeps it from becoming too thick or too dense the dry down is just <sighs> Stunning. It's perfect. It's perfect. Okay, so the last one is called Oud Luchon, which is there. Um, this one kind of surprised me because when I first received all of them, for some reason, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who does it, but I sniffed all the atomizers and I couldn't get anything from the other two, but I did get something from this Oud Luchon. But it wasn't very pleasant, so I was already like, okay, well, we'll see, you know, we'll see. So when the day came to test them for the first time, I was surprised because of how sweet it was. But then again, it's Oud Lukum, and Lukum is Turkish delights, and Turkish delights are sweet, so I guess it's it was quite sweet compared to the other two in the collection, which I was like, oh, okay. It, it was a nice surprise, nice surprise. I really enjoyed it. So in the opening of this one, what I detect the most is Ylang Ylang. You have a blast of Ylang Ylang. And for me, um, Ylang Ylang is kind of like Jasmine's sweet sister. So it smells similar to Jasmine, but the sweetness is amped up quite a bit. And it also has notes of dried fruit, so you can imagine the combination of the sweet dried fruits and the sweet ylang-ylang 
it's quite sweet. It's quite sweet, um, but I don't find it cloyingly sweet, but I can imagine this being challenging to wear um, in like warmer, more humid climates. Um, thankfully, just like Sans Fleurs, the opening of this doesn't last forever, but the Yilang Yilang remains prominent throughout the wear of this. Um, it's called Oud Lukung, but what I get throughout the entire wear of this is Yilang Yilang, which is not a bad thing because me playing around with this fragrance is actually making me want to explore more fragrances that showcase the note of Yilang Yilang because I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's slightly, ever so slightly endolic. It's still sweet, almost like Ylang Ylang dipped in maple syrup, but I shouldn't, maybe not, maybe not maple syrup, but Ylang Ylang dipped in honey. That's a better way to say it. Ylang Ylang dipped in honey. Uh, but it just has that nice floral texture that's really soft and delicate. But it's there like it's, it's there it's full it's there in your face so as i said the sweetness after the first like 15 20 minutes um kind of dies down and just allows that yulang yulang to just blossom so beautifully and yeah this is a fragrance surrounded or this is a fragrance that showcases the note of yulang yulang to me in the most beautiful way i've ever experienced and i found this one to be to develop more than the other two, um, Sans Fleurs didn't develop that much at all. Um, Chip du Nord did develop, but I felt like the development was fast. And with Oud Lukun, develops for sure, but it's a more, it's a slower, more, um, I don't want to say intimate, but it's more gentler. Uh, transition in the wear. So there's a tobacco note in this fragrance, but to me it's not so evident. I feel like it does kind of creep in to help alleviate the sweetness of the Ylang Ylang, but I get like this dry bitterness. So I just imagine like just dried up tobacco, like old, dark, dried up tobacco um, in here. And it does, on my skin at least, it does, you know, hint at some aromatic qualities, which I really do enjoy. Because the fact that it's dry and bitter um, to help kind of soften, soften, <laughs> to help soften that sweetness from the Ylang Ylang, I feel like it's a really nice contrast between like super sweet floral and like super um, bitter herbalness. Yeah, so it just it just works. It just works. It works so well. It's perfect. So in the dry down, the fragrance becomes much less sweet. It really dials down on the sweetness by a lot. Um, the oud in here is not an in-your-face oud. I honestly wouldn't even categorize it as an oud fragrance, which is why the name kind of confuses me. The sweetness of the Yilang Yilang, or the Yilang Yilang in general, takes a back seat, allowing for the woody notes to step forth. Um, so that it becomes quite dry. So I get dry woods and I get like a fresh pine. Pine isn't listed in the note. Um, it could be because of the Peru balsam perhaps, but I get this fresh pine. So imagine like being in the forest um, and I guess there's cedar trees. I don't know. Um, I'm a city girl. <laughs> But I imagine like giant pine trees with like soft withered ylang ylang petals stuck in the pine needles. That's what the dry down smells. It's it's quite aromatic. That pine is so fresh, but it's not like like pine salt, you know, it's just like a fresh pine, like being out in the mountains and it's just like fresh, cool air. That's what it's like. Um, so it's no longer Turkish Delight. It starts off Turkish Delight in the opening and for the majority of the wear, but then it gets, it turns into something completely different, like a complete 180 where it's more dry and aromatic, um, slightly floral, but ultimately just like a woody aromatic fragrance that just, it just, I keep saying just work. It's so nice to wear. It's beautiful. And like I said, this fragrance to me doesn't translate as an oud fragrance. So beware. You might think because of the name that it is 
an oud forward fragrance and I find that Sans Fleurs is more of an oud forward fragrance than oud Lacombe. So just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, out of the three, um, Chypre du Nord and oud Lacombe were amazing. I was not impressed by Sans Fleurs. So that one, you know, but these two, are stunning. Ulukum also has pretty good lasting power. Um, I did enjoy testing these out very much um, and I'm considering adding them to my collection. I noticed the other day that they do have 9 mil travel atomizers so or is it 10 mil? I can't remember but that might be the way to go. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, comment down below and let me know if you've tried any fragrances from Bortnikov or if you've tried any of the three from the most recent release. Um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!